Hey everyone, Mark Kwok here. It's been a while since I put a video up and I'm so sorry, but you know what? Better late than never. And today we're talking about three different things that I think make a house better when you add them to your home. So I had an episode several months ago about three things that can elevate your home and you can check that out over here. And I said that I'd have us at part two, part three, whatever. And so I'm here today to add some things. So the first thing is something that I think a lot of people already have. And I, I just wanted to add a little bit more context and that is a coffee table book. Now, this is a huge category. You go to Barnes and Noble, you go to Amazon, whatever, there's a ton of coffee table books and it's a known commodity, right? Most people have them just on their coffee table, on their kitchen, whatever. But the thing I do wanna say is that this is an opportunity for you to elevate not only your design aesthetic, but also to let people know who you are a little bit. People think about just like random coffee table books that look cool, but have nothing to do with themselves. I love it when there's a hobby or some sort of thing that you have an expertise on or you have a passion about, and then you portray that onto your coffee table book. It becomes a conversational piece that you have some more information on, right? Probably self-explanatory, but a lot of people try to like fake it till you make it with these coffee table books, but it's an opportunity, right? It's a, it's a great way to showcase who you are. For me, three of my favorites are, you guys know I love coffee. It's like a two, three times a day sort of thing. I probably have a problem, but Blue Bottle is one of my favorite companies. I even made a video about Blue Bottle beans somewhere up here, and so check that out as well. But this is a coffee table book that not only looks good on a coffee table, look at these colors here. They got the, I don't know, it just looks fa fantastic. Also, I mean, obviously the things inside is really, I mean, some of this are pictures and stuff. It looks really good. But also actually the story is super interesting. I mean, uh, this is local to San Francisco. It's something that actually has a lot to do with me. I've been in so many blue bottles across the United States. So I have something to say about it. And so this is one of them that's perfect for me. If you know anything about me, I also love making cocktails. My last name's Quok. I often make these things called Quoktails. It's very cheesy, I know. But Death & Co is a bar in New York that created this awesome book. I mean, it's cool because it's just black, sure, from a design stance, a little bit boring, I suppose but they have all of these great recipes on how to make cocktails. I have made numerous cocktails from here and it comes from some of the best cocktail enthusiasts out there, experts in their field. Not just this company, Death & Co, that's in New York, but so many other bars contribute to this book and this recipes. Um, I, I just think it's a fantastic resource. And if you ever want a cocktail and you, I don't know, are at my place and you see this on the coffee table, boom, let's open it up. Let's start making a cocktail, let's make it happen. And lastly, if you've been following my channel, of course you know this as well, but I love watches. This is kind of a, an icon in the watch world. It's called The Man and His Watch. It has all these different photos of a specific watch and the story behind it and how it's connected to a specific person. I mean, this is like right up my alley. I love watches. And so this is another book that just, you know, you put it on the coffee table and all of a sudden, if anyone's interested in watches, boom, we can talk about it, we can walk through it and so on. All right, enough time talking about that. That's the first thing, coffee table books, but let's move on to number two. This is a market bag from Apollos Global. Uh, I really like the design of this and this has become kind of ubiquitous, I think at least in San Francisco. A ton of people have this bag or knockoffs of it or so on. It's not cheap and it is you know, made of leather. It's really nice quality, but it is really, really something that I think could elevate the look of a place and showcase that, hey, you have a little more thought into something as basic as a market bag. I mean, literally you take this to the grocery store or you could take this to, you know, when you're shopping, but you've elevated this piece to a point where it's aesthetically pleasing, high quality, and something you can kind of, I don't know, be proud to look at on a day in and day out basis. There are a bunch of this stuff on Etsy uh, that are much cheaper than just the Apollos version. I think this one was one of the first designs to come out or something, but it really caught on. I think it might be their most popular item. Again, it's simple. It's just a bag. It's a burlap sack bag and it has some nice, you know, leather trims and stuff like that. But, you know, it represents San Francisco and it just, it can sit outside, right? It doesn't have to be shoved into some sort of closet or some sort of drawer. It can sit outside and look awesome. You can start filling it or unfilling it and doing whatever you want with it. I actually most recently have been using this as a uh, holder for like masks and cleaners and things like that right in front of our door so that when you walk in, you can kind of clean yourself up or if you're about to walk out, you can mask and so on. So a lot of uses, it's just a bag, sure, but it can elevate a little bit of the aesthetic and the quality of the environment. Lastly, this is something that if you design your home or you, you love kind of decorating, this is gonna be an obvious one, but throw blankets. I mean, this stuff, multi-use, right? 
it has texture and look and aesthetic and so on. And so if there's a nice couch, you put it on top of the couch. If it's a nice bed, you put it on top of the bed. It just adds an extra layer, depth, texture. That's great from an aesthetic standpoint, but of course, what is a blanket's number one job is to keep you warm. I almost feel like this is just too obvious to talk about because who doesn't have blankets or ever use blankets, but just take it as an opportunity to add kind of the touch of color or touch of texture that you're missing. A lot of people just put the couch or the bed in and that's the end of the story. But this is functional and also has form and adds a layer of depth to your place. I mean, I, our family, we have a bunch of things here, various different textures and colors and materials. This one's cotton by Ralph Lauren. This one's wool by uh, Pendleton. This one is homemade by my wife, very cool. And you know, you just toss these in different places and you don't have to be precious about it. Just put it somewhere and boom, you have yourself better aesthetics, some warmth if your friends come over or if you're kind of feeling cold. Put a little time, a little effort, think a little bit about it. And actually, if you spend a little extra, I think you can get some great quality things that look good and feel good for a long, long time. All right, guys, I know this has probably been very, very obvious for those of you guys who kind of design your homes and you know, you're, you're into this stuff. But for those who aren't, you know, be thoughtful about those three different items, your coffee table books, market bag, you know, some sort of bag that you take in and out and you can kind of portray out in the home. And then third, you throw blankets. I mean, throw pillows obviously as well, but those, the blanket is what I want to talk about today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mark Kwok. I will see you guys on the next one.